Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Foothills United Methodist Church as we gather together again for online worship. We're very glad that you have joined us. We want to remind you that we are offering in-person worship inside the sanctuary now. That happens at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. It does follow the state guidelines for mask and screening and distancing, and capacity is limited. So you will need to sign up using our reservation system. You can find that link on our website and in the e-newsletter. And of course, we're continuing to provide our online recorded worship at 10 a.m. on Sundays as well. We hope that you'll join us in either format. Let us continue now in worship as Pastor Christie leads us in our children's message. Good morning, friends. Welcome to Children's Time. Today, we'll be talking about Jesus as the true vine. Jesus says in the scripture for today that he is the vine and we are the branches. Branches are connected to the vine. They are part of the vine as one plant. The branches aren't separate from the vine and can't grow on its own. Branches depend on the vine as its life source for nourishment. Branches don't produce fruit. It's the vine that produces the fruit. And the branches are there to bear the fruit from the vine. Well, you know by my accent alone that I'm from the South. And one thing we Southerners do, and my family was no different, is use sayings or idioms to describe something. A saying that I thought about when I read the scripture was, birds of a feather flock together. Now that might seem strange because birds and vines are different images. But this saying means that similar people like to be together. People seek out others like themselves. Now, my parents used to say this saying to me as a teenager when they did not particularly like the friends that I was hanging out with. They didn't want me to be influenced by them. Now, if I was associating myself with people whom my parents saw as a bad influence, then I might become like them, or heaven forbid, I might already be like them. As most teenagers, I didn't think my parents knew what they were talking about. But there is truth to it. We are shaped by those around us. The people who surround us can influence us, whether that is a positive or a negative influence. Just something happens in the flock. Birds flock together because they feel safe and protected. They share a food source, they have companionship, and they let their guard down. They become one, and being together is important for their growth and survival. Well, this is Jesus' point when he tells the disciples to abide in me in the vine. As branches, we must stay connected to our vine no matter what trials come. Because we cannot do anything on our own. We depend on our vine for nourishment and survival. When we associate ourselves with Jesus, we are influenced by him and become more Christ-like. We seek him out because there is already something within us like him that wants to grow. Just as the vine shapes the branches, we are shaped by Jesus to bear the fruit that he grows within us. So let us remember that Jesus is our true vine and we are his branches. May we stay connected to our vine. Let's pray. Jesus, our true vine, we want to be shaped by you. We want to associate ourselves with you and become more like you. 
Help us to abide in you when trials come and help us to bear the fruit that you grow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join in the call to worship. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Rejoice in the Lord and give thanks to God's holy name. I will extol you, my God, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Now please join in the hymn of praise, Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from. Please join in the affirmation. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have come to our time of worship for prayer. Let us prepare our hearts as Tanya leads us, and O oh Thou Who This Mysterious Bread. Christ, holy vine, we live in you. Your blood flows through us. Your fruit ripens in us on our best days. But on our worst days, we think we produce fruit and that we know the best way to ripen your fruit. We wear ourselves out by trying to speed up the growing process. And when the trials come, and they always do, we wither on the vine because we did not abide in you. Remind us that on our best days and on our worst days, your blood still flows through us. You are still at work ripening fruit within us 
and that we belong to you. Help us to not sever ourselves from you and your love, but to allow it to flourish and blossom and bear fruit within us. We come with many things on our hearts, joys and concerns for ourselves and for others. We pause to lift these up silently and to meditate on Christ's love. Christ Jesus, we thank you for your infinite and healing love. It is your love that will carry us through the concerns that we have laid before you. We pray for those who need your love and care because of illness, loss, grief, woundedness, oppression, and marginalization. Grow fruit within us to help those who face these evils. Help us to abide in you and trust that you are at work. We pray this prayer in the name of our true vine. Amen. Let us sing together the Lord's Prayer. Today's scripture is John 15, 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of those gathered together be acceptable unto you. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Jesus lived in the countryside of Galilee, and that was a country that was marked by farming. And most of his followers were farmers and fishermen. 
So Jesus used examples from agriculture to teach about God and God's kingdom. And that's true for our scripture today, where the metaphor is the vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower, Jesus told his disciples. Jesus is saying that God, the creator, plants and cultivates the vine, and the Son is the vine itself, rooted in God. And then Jesus continues with that metaphor. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. So now we are brought into this relationship. As members of the body of Christ, we are now part of the Son himself, just as the branches are part of the main vine. And it's on those branches that fruit is born. If you have roses in your yard, you know the importance of pruning during the winter when those rose bushes are dormant. And the same is true for vineyards. Each year when the vines are bare, they are cut back so that they may produce more abundantly in the new season. And so it is with God. Here is how Eugene Peterson describes it in his translation of the Bible called The Message. I am the real vine, and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape-bearing, he prunes back, so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. You can see how Christ forms this interconnected relationship between us and God. Abide in me, live in me, make your home in me as I do you, Jesus tells them. And as we move through seasons of life, just as the vine moves through seasons of the year, we find similarities. Some seasons are mild and sun-filled and produce bumper crop of fruit. Some seasons are filled with hardship, unexpected changes, and it challenges our ability to produce any fruit. But through it all, Christ encourages us to trust in him as the true vine, that he will keep us rooted in God regardless of the circumstances. And that when we face difficulties and are even pruned at times, we will be productive branches of the vine if we stay connected with Jesus Christ. Now, this is not the only time that Jesus taught his followers using this example of the vine and wine. In fact, the very first miracle that's recounted in the Gospel of John is when Jesus and his disciples attended a wedding in a little village called Cana. And during the wedding party at the bridegroom's home, Jesus' mother pulls him aside and tells him some bad news. The wine has run out. Now, I think her intent is clear, as all mothers are able to communicate with very few words. In this case, it is the wine has run out, and Jesus, can you do something about it? Why don't you help the couple out? And Jesus refuses at first. He says that his hour has not yet come. But eventually he relents and agrees to lend a hand. So Jesus takes six large stone jars. These were jars that were used for Jewish purification rites, for washing before meals, for example. And he tells the servant to fill them with water. And they do so. And this is more than 120 gallons of water. And then they are taken to the steward, the chief household servant in charge of the party. 
And when he takes a taste from one of the jars, he realizes that it is now wine, more than enough for the celebration to continue. And it's not just any wine, but described as very good wine. And the steward doesn't know anything about Jesus' involvement in this, so he goes to the groom and he says, hey, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine later but you have kept the good wine until now. The wine that Jesus miraculously creates comes from a basic element of life, water. And that water is now transformed into a new sacrament, the sacrament of Holy Communion. Not only is the the new wine called good, but it's also overflowing in its bounty for others. More wine than the guests could even possibly consume. Created out of nothing when the party seemed about to end. So out of poverty and need, God's grace overwhelms us. And Christ shows us in the wedding at Cana that God's grace and love is never-ending. It cannot be exhausted and to be thoroughly enjoyed as part of life. Now, we Methodists use grape juice instead of real wine when we share Holy Communion. We used to use real wine back in the day of John Wesley, just like our Episcopalian brothers and sisters, until the second half of the 19th century. And that was the time of the temperance movement in America, and Methodists were leaders in that effort to prohibit the consumption of alcohol, and that included wine at communion. Now, something else happened in history that made this occur, and that was the discovery of pasteurization by Louis Pasteur. And it just so happens that a Methodist physician by the name of Thomas Bramwell Welch learned of the pasteurization process and decided to apply it to the grape juice so that it could be served as, quote, an unfermented sacramental wine in his church in, guess, Vineland, New Jersey. In my very first appointment, I served as an associate pastor at the First United Methodist Church in Santa Monica. And I was asked to officiate a wedding for one of our young adults at the church. And his fiancée was a young woman from Ireland, and she happened to be Roman Catholic. So when I met with the couple to plan their wedding service, I asked if they wanted Holy Communion to be served. Now, this is a question I ask of all couples because it's part of the wedding service. But the majority of couples decide to exclude it. I made it clear to them that if we were going to serve communion, that the bread and the cup would not just be offered to them as bride and groom, or not just to the wedding party, but to everyone in attendance. Because that is part of our tradition of an open table offered to all in the United Methodist Church. And because of the bride's Roman Catholic tradition, I assume that they would say, no, we don't want to do Holy Communion. Take it out of the service. Because it could possibly create a conflict or division between the two families. I was wrong in my assumption. The couple said, yes, we do want Holy Communion served. And we understand that it will be open and served to all. So, On the day of the wedding, I was probably more nervous than the bride and the groom. I looked out into the sanctuary, and the church was full, both sides. uh, The pews were filled, both families present, Protestants and Catholics. And I was really worried that when I came forward to offer the bread and the cup to the congregation, half the church would come forward and half the church would stay seated. And it would signify a divide between both the faith traditions and the families. 
and it could be embarrassing. And the last thing I wanted to do was embarrass this young couple on their wedding day. But fortunately, God's grace was greater than my lack of faith. For when I invited everyone to come forward to receive the bread and the cup, no one hesitated. Everyone present shared in the sacrament in celebration of the bride and groom and as one body in Christ. The cup that Jesus shared with his followers at the table, it it bound them together as a family. And that cup does that for us as well when we share in Holy Communion. Because although we are all very different in a variety of ways, we are made one in Christ when we share in this holy meal together. And just like a family, we, we bring our joys and our sorrows. We bring our thanksgivings and our disappointments. The cup, the cup filled with the wine that we share is the fruit of the vine. And it represents all that we are. And even though I have served Holy Communion now, Hundreds of times in my pastoral ministry, it never fails to communicate a sense of mystery and sacredness. Because when we come together, whether it's in person or online in our own homes, when we share the bread and the cup, we are connecting in an unspoken way. In the sharing of this cup, we acknowledge both our diversity and our unity in Jesus Christ. That we are branches of the true vine planted and tended by God. Yet we are also one, producing our own fruit because of our connection to Jesus Christ, that true vine. So friends, let us come and share together once again in this miracle of the true vine Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we give thanks for the gifts that have been given to us by God, that have been entrusted to us for carrying out God's call and ministry in this world. And we are grateful for your generosity. Let us continue now as we hear our offertory that's being shared by Ben Plache. Come share the Lord. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through his loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. and drink and food. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the
is burning in our hearts like a living flame. For through his loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Come take the bread, come drink the wine. We come now to the time of sharing the sacrament of Holy Communion with one another, with Jesus as the true vine. We invite you at home to join us by preparing your own bread and cup for sharing in your own household. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. But the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. In this congregation and in the United Methodist Church, the table of the Lord is open to all who wish to come 
and partake in this holy meal. So we invite you at home to do so as well in the sharing of the bread and the cup with one another. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us join together now in the prayer after receiving communion. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves for others. Your love has made us a new people. As a people of love, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. and sisters, as we prepare to depart and begin our week, having been fed at the table together by the bread and cup and by the true vine, Jesus Christ, go filled in spirit to share God's love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.